lies one day at a time. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. They're here to get your day going fine. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. Kimmy Kim and Elation's Radio. And here's your host. Miss Kim Robinson. Come on, everybody, give God a praise in the temple. Tonight we have a prayer. You know you need the word from the Lord. Lift your hands in His atmosphere and say, Lord, speak to me. Come on, fellowship, help me say, Lord, give us a word. the word. The world's in trouble, Lord. Give us a word. Our families are in trouble, Lord. Give us a word. Render ourselves unto you. We say all we need. All we need. Just one word. Just one word from you. Require all we need. All we need. Just one word. Just one word from you. Once you join in with the worship, everybody, lift your hands and say, Lord, give us a word. Come on, let's sing. God, our lives are going to be better when you speak to us. Hallelujah. Our children are coming home when you speak to us. Come on, you know it by now. Come on, say all we need. Come on, say it. Say it till you believe it. Lean on them and say, All we need, all we need, just one word, just one word from you. This is what the Lord promised that you would. We know things are getting better for you, things are getting better for me. Just wave back at me and say, I know that's right. I know that's right. You promised you would. You You got it by now. You got it by now. Come on, lift your hands and say, all. Just one word. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, things are getting better. Things are getting better. Things are getting better. Because all we need. One word. Just one word. Come on, stand up on your feet. I need about three more people to stand up on your feet and help me say, You promised you would. Come on, point up the heavens with a sign of victory and say, You promised you would heal my land. Singing it like you really believe it. Come on, say you promised you would. Look at your neighbor and say, I see things are getting better for you. Come on, say, all I need is just one word. Just one word. Doesn't matter what the doctor says, doesn't matter what the lawyer says, but all I need is just one word. Well, I dig the digging Wilbur Jones. I just want to come on tonight and tell everybody that we love our pastor 
And we want you tonight to get ready, get your Bibles, and get your pens and your paper, and get ready to hear ninety minutes of word power. Good man, I'm telling you how Pastor can give you that word. And he's coming now, the Apostle Vincent L. Smith. Come on, everybody. God bless you, everyone, tonight. This is the Apostle Vincent L. Smith. You have tuned into the party. Amen. Tuesday night, 1030 p.m. We are so glad for you, you and you. The next 90 minutes is going to bless, change, challenge whole life. Amen, and we're so grateful tonight. We're right on the precipice of, amen, the end of April, looking right at May. Oh, my God, isn't that something? We're looking right at May already. Amen, just another couple of days. But we thank God tonight. Hey, man, get relaxed. Get you a cup of tea. Hey, man, get you a few crackers. Hey, man, some cookies. Get you some milk, whatever. Because we get ready to get down in the word of God. And I'm grateful tonight, hey, man, for the help that the Lord has given us. Hey, man, we want to greet tonight. Overseer Elder Ernest E. Richard Jr. You with me, my brother? Yes, I am, sir. Grace and peace be unto you from my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for this opportunity to be a part of this great broadcast called The Voice. Standing here, double plaid, <laughs> extra forks just in case I drop one so I can make sure I eat well, and not only myself, but all who hear our voice tonight. Amen. Bless God. Bless God. Also, my other brother, we thank God for this man, God, who stands alongside me, the Apostle Irvin A. Whitlow. Man, you with me? I couldn't afford to miss it even if I wanted to because I know I'd never hear the end of it. So I've got to be here. And because God is so good to give me the opportunity, I figured, I figured I'd just go ahead and be here anyway because it is the voice. Man of God, the Lord bless you. I'm looking forward to what the Lord is going to say and do tonight in Jesus' name. Man, don't make the people think about me like that. I ain't that kind of guy. Lord have mercy. Well, thank you, my brothers. The Lord bless you. Amen for being a part of the voice. Amen tonight. We're going to have a word of prayer. Amen. But before we do that, are there any others on the line? Please recognize yourself at this time. Bless, Lord. All right. All others? that are online, please recognize yourself at this time. Thank you. Oh, this is Amber Smith. Lord How y'all doing? This is Amber Who's Smith. That? How y'all doing? Amber Smith. Amber Smith. Thank you. That's my oldest daughter. Amen. <laughs> hey, we have any others that will recognize themselves tonight? All right. Well, we're going to get this train moving. Hey, man, because tonight we like that old show that used to come on. It's the Soul Train. Hallelujah. <laughs> hey, man, they would come on jumping and popping. Hey, man, and getting down. So that's the yeah, way man. we want to be tonight. We want to get moving for God because God has something he want to say to us tonight. Hey, man, uh, Overseer Richard, please give us a word of prayer. With pleasure. 
Precious Father, it's in the name of Jesus that we come before you, God, humbling ourselves before you, God. Thank you that you told us to come boldly to the throne of grace, where we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God, as we prepare to go into this radio broadcast today, we want to first and foremost give you glory and honor simply because of who you are. It was you who was made away and given us life, health, and strength in our physical bodies to see this great day and to come to this very moment. And now, God, we want you to take charge and control of this radio station, God, we bind the hand of the adversary, we cancel the plans of the enemy, any demon, any distraction, any disturbance that may try to arise, Father God, we thank you that like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard against it. And so, God, as we give this into your charge, into your care, and into your control, open the eyes, the ears, the minds, the hearts of your people, that they may receive this engrafted word that it may just deep, go deep down into their spirit, Father God, and become part of their DNA, begin to nurture and grow in them, and to cause them to recognize and realize there is a more excellent way, and that way comes through you. Now, Father, if we found favor in thy sight according to your word, we have this confidence in you that that which we've asked according to your word shall be done in accordance to your word. And we go, go forward in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Now tonight, amen, we have a special treat. Uh, my oldest daughter, Amber, who just chimed in, amen, is going to sing us a song tonight. That's she forward. is a songwriter. She performs, and amen, she's been a blessing to the ministry since she was, amen, probably about eight, nine years old working in the ministry here as our praise and worship leader. And so tonight she's going to sing for us, and then we're going to come back and get in the word of God. Somebody say praise the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord. Amen. There is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary. There is a stillness in the atmosphere. So come and tell the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here, God is here, there is a sweet anointing in the sanctuary, there is a stillness in the end. So come and tell all the burdens you have carried or in the sanctuary. God is here. God is here. Yes, he is here. God is here to break the yoke and lift the heavy burdens. Jesus is here. Savior is. To heal the hopeless heart, bless the broken. So come and lay it down, the burdens you have carried for in the sanctuary. God is here. 
Jesus is here. God bless you. Amen. Hello? Amen. Amen. We Amen. thank God for Sister Amber Renee Smith on tonight. Amen. Blessing us. And how many know that God is here? Amen. Yes. He want to heal them broken hearts. He want to lift the burdens. He want to heal the sick. Amen. He want to do it in your life. And we are forever grateful tonight. Thank you, Sister Amber. Stay online and be blessed by the word. Amen. We praise God. Um, Pastor Whitlow, I'm going to start us off. I want you to pick us up. Amen. Where I lead it all. And then, uh, Overseer, I want you to pick up wherever he leave off. And then we're going to get into tonight's lesson. Well, in the first week of teaching uh, on this month, we started in the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 20, from verse 11 from down to verse 20. Amen. And in that first week, we dealt with the fact that there were three enemies who set themselves against the people of God, the children of Israel. Amen. And they came against them. Amen. Uh, As a matter of fact, we discovered that the three enemies that came against Jerusalem, came against Israel, they didn't even like each other, but they joined forces to come against Israel. Let me tell you something, people of God, when you're blessed, people come against you for no reason. Amen. You you didn't have to do nothing to them. You didn't have to say nothing to them. You didn't have to treat them a certain way. But they'll come against you just because. Amen. So we discovered that. But then we've been talking under the title, Amen. Is your family aligned for the victory? Mm. Then we discovered in this text, we discovered in this text that there was a family, a family called Judah, a family of praisers, a family of worshipers, Amen. And we discovered in our text, amen, it said when all Judah stood up, we discovered that when Judah stood up, it was all the men of every family. How do we know that? We are not being sexist. We're not being male chauvinist because it said when all Judah stood up, They grab their wives. And I know the Bible ain't talking about no man grabbing another man. Lord, help me tonight. Amen. So it says that every man of Judah grabbed his wife. Every wife grabbed the little ones. And then they got their older children and began to bless the Lord. Amen. And we thank God that in our families, we ought to be able to praise together. I know somebody said tonight, I don't even know where my son is. I don't know where my daughter is. But we're going to pray for that before we get off the line tonight because it is important that family have godly fellowship. It is important that family Amen. Praise God together and destroy yokes. Amen. It comes to my mind right now. In the Psalms, it said that blessed is the man that hath his quiver full. And then it goes down in that in that Psalm. It said the man was blessed. It said because his children shall deal with his enemies at the gate. Your children 
need to be taught how to be praise warriors in your house. Matter of fact, they need to see you praise. They need to see you worship so that they can become praise and worship warriors. Praise and worship. Amen, battle people. Amen, and I thank God. Amen, that we discovered that family were praising God together. In this second Chronicles chapter 20, amen, and now I pass it to Apostle Urban Whitlow. To those of you that are just tuning in, this is only the review for the month. We have not started the lesson for tonight yet. Just to read in the hearing of the people of God, Second Chronicles 20, verse 11 down through 20, says, Behold, I say how they reward us to come to pass us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. Then upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jeel, the son of Mattaniah, a Levite of the son of Asaph, came the Spirit of the Lord in the midst of the congregation. And he said, Hearken ye, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God. Tomorrow go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Zid, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Juriel. Ye shall not need to fight in this battle. Set yourselves, stand ye still, and see the salvation of the Lord with you, O Judah and Jerusalem. Fear not, nor be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord will be with you. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah, all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. And the Levites of the children of the Kohathites and of the children of Korite stood up to praise the Lord of the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice on high. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God. So shall you be established. Believe his prophets. So shall we prosper. The reading of the word of the Lord for the people of God. The very fact that the family was all together did something that the family is looking for today. Family is looking for a miracle. Families are looking for a breakthrough. Families are looking for God to do something. And God does it. When he sees the family together God does it When he sees the family Worshipping together When he sees the family praising together When he sees the family in anticipation Together Not uh, antagonizing one another Or being at animosity Or at odds with one another But when they are together God moves when people are coming together And this is the thing That people have missed they can't see God work as long as they are divided. I'm going to turn it over to Chief Overseer, uh, Elder Ernest Richard. Elder, are you with us? I'm sorry. I muted myself. I'm sorry. As we left off last week, we... Uh, left off talking about the power and effect of praise. And as you heard the scriptures read in your hearing, and I'm not going to reveal a whole lot because there's still a whole lot more meat on this particular bone. 
We recognize and realize that praise is a weapon. We also said that praise is your way in for the way out. One thing we have to learn to do in this day and age, especially in these times and what we're dealing with on this given point in time, praise. We have to learn how to lift up the name of the Lord. I like what Jesus said on one occasion when he said that if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. And the best way to get into the presence of the Lord is to go ahead and shabak our God. Go ahead and lift those holy hands. Go ahead and just open that mouth and open that heart and just allow the Spirit of God to come and infiltrate you. No matter what it is you're going through, no matter what it is you're dealing with, God is right there waiting and ready. And when you are faced with a difficult situation such as was Jehoshaphat, and the children of Israel, they learned one thing. I'm going to say this, and then I'm going to put it in the hands of Chief Apostle because I feel a preaching spirit coming on. If you are going to go into battle, you best learn how to send Judah first. Oh, but Judah can't go by themselves. Judah needs Simeon to go with him, and we found out last week that Simeon's name pertained to faith. So here's what I'm going to say, and I'm going to close with this opening statement. When faith and praise go hand in hand, you're going to win every battle on every land. Come on, Chief Apostle. The Lord bless you. You have just heard our overview for the last few weeks. Amen. And we pray that those trinkets are blessing you even right now, even as we get ready to go into our lesson tonight. We are still talking about, is your family aligned for victory? Amen. Is your family aligned for the victory? Amen. And we shall go into, amen, I believe where we at, verse number 15. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes. Yes, sir. All right. 15. Yes, sir. Let us read number 15, and we shall begin our lesson tonight. 15 says, and he said, this is Jehaziel speaking, and he said, hearken ye, all Judah, all ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou King Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. By reason of this great multitude For the battle is not yours But God's Amen Now we we want to We want to show you The subject tonight So we're going to begin To align this car We're going to stop Bearing to the left And to the right And we're getting ready to pull uh, This car into alignment Uh, The first thing you need to understand is this alignment. Your family matters in your worship. Amen. If you are worshiping by yourself, you need to pull your little babies, amen, into your praise, into your worship. You need to, amen, get your husband to at least hold your hand while praise and worship is going on in your home. I'm not talking about at the church or at the convention, amen, or at the park when there's a gospel meeting out there. I'm talking about in your home. You must align your family to praise and worship along with you, amen, and get your whole family involved. Amen. Because the Bible told us that we should train up a child in the way that he should go. And when he is old, he shall not depart from it. But if you don't train them while they're young, there's nothing to remember when they get older and then Satan comes in and sway them this way and that way and the other way. And the next thing you know, instead of praising God with them in the house of God, you're looking at them through the glass. You're talking to them through the bars. Amen. You're 
were talking to them around the lawyer's table. Amen. Mm-hmm. I admonish you tonight to align your family to know God in praise and worship. That's the mm-hmm. first thing. Now, we discover something that is aligning your family. You must uh, uh, understand that Judah is only one tribe out of 12 sons Come on. that were born under Jacob. Mm-hmm. But inside of this story, we discovered that while Judah was praying, was praising, amen, somehow Jehaziel, a cousin of Judah, another family member from another tribe got caught up when the praise went up. Uh Uh-oh. Amen. He got caught up with Judah when the praise went up. And when the praise went up, he went up. I need you to understand that Jehaziel was out of the tribe of Levi. So what was Jehaziel doing in the midst of Judah while they were praising? I want you to see how God is aligning this thing. He took one part of the family who are the praisers, and got them the praising, and then got the prophet in the middle, stuck in the middle of praise, and then begins to anoint him with a word from heaven. Oh, my God. I'm my trying God to is. tell you, amen, that if you can align your family in praise and worship, you just might have a prophet in your house. You just might have an evangelist in your house. You might have the gift of healing in your house. You might have tongues of interpretation in your house, and it may not be in you. It might be in your children, or by surprise, amen, the children might have a friend over that God will use right in the midst of what you're doing unto him. Now, Jehaziel was out of the tribe of the priesthood, mm-hmm. where, the, where the preachers and the priests and the prophets and the singers and the musicians hung out at. Now, look at what God does. He, this young man, I'll say it like this. He takes this young man out of another praising tribe and put him with the praise tribe and then anoint him to the word. Amen. And then that word, and let me tell you something, when you're going through certain situations, you don't need somebody that's going to prophesy. You need somebody that's going to prophesy. Okay. Amen. We got too many people today prophet trying, but God ain't never called nobody to prophet try. He said prophesy. He told Ezekiel to go to a dry place and prophesy. He told Isaiah to prophesy. He told Amos to prophesy. Amen. And it goes on and on and on. So I declare unto you that you need a prophet to show up in the midst of what God is getting ready to do for you, and God is aligning this thing. He got the praises, the prophet. Now let's look at what he does. The Mm. prophet prophesied to the king. Uh Uh-oh. Somebody Somebody that was not of royalty, he was not a cupbearer, he, he, he was not a man walking around in the palace with a job, but 
When the Lord anointed at his mouth, he began to prophesy unto Jehoshaphat. And most of you online tonight know that in this day and hour, leadership, talking mostly about pastors, leadership has a major problem with somebody who's not in the pulpit, who's not a big name, who's not one of the popular people, giving them a word in this hour. Like God, don't anoint those that are in the pew. Like God, don't Mm. anoint those that are in the choir. Like he can't use the musician. Like the drummer can't jump up and say, God said, I want you to understand, we got to cut this mess out in the house of God, if it ain't T.D. Jake, if it ain't Rodney the Bynum, if it ain't Paula White, amen, we don't think God is moving. Somebody come on and talk to me, because I feel like flying tonight. Uh, before you start, uh, Vice uh, Apostle, I want to welcome our Facebook Live people. Pastor Kenyatta is with us on Facebook Live. Bishop Willa Moody is with us on Facebook Live. She's on. Uh, Bless you. I gather she's still there. And uh, we invite anybody that would like to come in and join in on the discussion, 646-564-9842. That number again, 646-564-9842. You're welcome to come in and join us if you'd like. All right, Vice Apostle, thank you for that space. I'm going to step back. Charles, here's the thing. You know, you said something so profound. Unfortunately, we have pastors who feel that because they are the pastor that they have arrived, that no one is bigger than them, that no one can speak to them, and that is so wrong. Let me tell you something, and I mean this with every fiber in my body. If a prophet, to be humbled, can listen to a donkey, then pastors need to take heed because they don't know that word just might save their life. But here's the problem. They're so caught up in routine. They're so caught up in traditionalism. They're so caught up in the way that they want things to be done that they miss what God wants to do. And that's why there are issues. And God wants to break people out of their issues. That's why this is, this is the thing I have learned. Even in my years of pastoring, I have learned that even though God deals with me, he doesn't give me the message for every Sunday morning. Sometimes Amen. he say, son, son, you need to sit back today because your assistant over there or your youth pastor has the word for today because I've been dealing with them all week. They have to be sensitive enough to hear from God. But unfortunately, some people are too fast for God. What do I mean? They do not want to wait. The scripture said that they were all there waiting. They were waiting, and because they were waiting, that's how the Spirit of the Lord was ready to speak and move because nobody was trying to take the lead over what the Lord wanted to do. I'm going to stop right there so that Chief Overseer can get in here. Well, I'm just going to pick up where you left off and go to the flip side of the coin here because we still, at the same time, whereas those who are not willing to wait, we also find those who would uh, come and they, it's not that they're wrong, it's just that their timing was off. I'm going to go to the time when God sent Samuel out to anoint a king, and seven times he got it wrong. And on the eighth try, he got it right in bringing in David. And I'm not saying to those listening to us today that, you know, what you're doing is out of line, but there are points in times when it's you and not God moving forward and trying to make things happen. This man of God came forth, and I mean, it takes something. Let's just be real about this thing. I don't know if he was new to prophecy or if he was new to hearing from God. I'm not going to sit there. We don't need to even go and find out. Here is the truth of the matter. Here's where we have to differentiate between the anointing, a gift, and a talent. When you have a gift or a talent, it's a natural thing for you to do what you do. You don't even think about it. But when it's the anointing that's upon you, I can't speak for nobody else, but you have a 
small level of fear, and I know God hasn't given us a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind, but just that small level of fear because it's an office or a position that you don't ordinarily operate in, yet you have enough confidence in the God of your salvation to go forth and to share a word and to send a message to the people of God to bring about deliverance and give some direction as to which way they should go. What am I saying right here as we look at today's lesson? Pay attention to that still, small voice that speaks in your spirit because you might be giving somebody their breakthrough. God might be using you to break fetters and to destroy pain. The anointing makes the difference. Let me turn it over to Chief Apostle to go back up to the top. Once again, those of you watching by social media, we bless you. Thank you for coming in. We praise God for you. We thank God for some of the comments that are coming across. Uh, we have, um, I think that's Pastor Tawanda Boulder. I think I got it right from Baton Rouge, Louisiana, who has joined us. You're welcome to come on to the program and share if you like what you hear. 646-564-9842. In your hands, Chief Apostle. Hey, hey man, let, let me let me uh, let me help that statement a little bit, just to give people a, a sense of what God does when God anoints us. Uh, we use that word fear, but it's really not the proper word for the saints. And I'm not talking about because He used it; most of us use it. Amen. But the real word should be, I'm at awe with God. Amen. I, I, I get into an awe-ness with God because I don't want to be wrong. I don't want to be off. I don't want to do anything that's going to kill the anointing at that moment. So we really go in an awe with God. And we say, Lord, you're so awesome until I don't want to hinder or tamper or contaminate what you're doing at that moment Mm -hmm. or in the flow that is happening in the midst of your people. That is all that comes over us. The enemy puts in our head that is fear, but it's Mm -hmm. not fear. It's our spirit man saying, I want to honor God in such a way that whatever he has given me to say at this moment, I want it to be accurate. I want it to be on time. I want God to move. When I get through speaking, I want to know that God used me Mm, in that moment. Mm -hmm. And the thing that is so wonderful about Jehaziel in this text, he was not mentioned before. He is not mentioned afterwards. He was just somebody available. Lord have mercy. Mm, I, I'm so sick and tired of when somebody gets used, all of a sudden they got a briefcase, they got a cape, amen, they Batman all of a sudden. <laughs> Lord have mercy. I want you to understand, amen, because the Lord used you. In this service, it don't make you a prophet. It don't make you an evangelist. It really don't even mean that you've been dipped in the oil good. It just meant Mm. you had oil for that moment. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Chief Apostle, did you say it didn't mean that they dipped in the oil good? Is that what you said? (laughs) (laughs) That's what I said. And that's what I mean. Because let me tell you something. We got to stop fooling people in the house of God. Amen. Wow. They get up. God used them in a service. They get up with a word. The word is accurate. We praise God. And then after service, you got 15 fools patting them on the back. Oh, you are good. God will use you. You are a great prophet. <laughs> no. Mm. There are persons that were used of God in the midst of the flow of the service. They may Amen. never prophesy again in their life. And you done told them they're a great prophet. Now they walking around, now they walking around proper trying 
when you done lied to them, amen, because they're not a prophet. Come on. Mm. Let, let, me, let me clear Let me clear this up before somebody just think I'm on the air going off. The Bible speaks to us, amen, in the New Testament, amen, it speaks to us about the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. Now, the spirit of prophecy is when the flow of the power of God is in the service, and then it falls on this one or that one, and they may prophesy, but it don't mean the prophet has spoken. Okay. Amen. It means an available child of God, an available Holy Ghost-filled person. God fell on them with a word, and they begin to speak. As God gave it to him. Mm. But that person may never speak again. Let me give you a perfect example. There was a lady in our church, a uh-huh. wonderful woman of God, saved, filled the Holy Ghost. But Jesus, she was justified. She was a great usher. All of that. One night in our prayer meeting, she stood up to testify. And she turned around and looked at me. She said, I am scared in my boots tonight. Mm. I said, what is wrong with her? She said, I am scared in my boots tonight. She said, I ain't never done this, Lord. She began to cry. I ain't never done this. So why are you asking me, Lord? She said, but I'm going to do it because you said so. And she turned around, looked me in my face, and began to minister to me. And every word she said was accurate, straight to the point. Amen. She didn't miss a nail. She didn't miss an eye. She didn't miss a teeth. Amen. And she never did that again until her dying day. She never did that again. But God used her that night. See, I've been in this thing long enough. I can give you Bible and life application. Oh, Lord. Okay. Some folks just talking Bible because they can read. But I got experience mm-hmm. with this thing, and that ain't no pat on the back. So I just wanted to give you a, that, a life application along with what I'm trying to tell you, that everybody mm-hmm. that moves in the Holy Ghost it does not mean they have a five-fold ministry on it. That's the truth. Amen. Amen. Please stop doing that to people. Please, I'm, I'm begging you tonight. Please stop doing that. That is ignorance in the body of Christ. Mm-hmm. That's right. I guess. And so, right. amen, God, told, he told us also in the epistle. I would not have you to have the spirit of ignorance. I got to talk about that Amen. one these days. The spirit of ignorance. Nobody don't want to deal with it. But we got some superfied folk in the church. Oh, Amen. Superfied. Lord Jesus. Mm. Oh, y'all Come quiet on. on me tonight. Oh, I'm not getting oh, tonight. I'm going to swim well, too. I'm going to get an Olympic medal tonight. Hallelujah. I want you to understand <laughs> what this young man in this 20th chapter of Chronicles, the second Chronicles, was a set up by God. Amen. He was, if mm. you understand the tribes of Israel, you were supposed to hang out with your tribe. Mm. What was Jehaziel doing in the midst of Judah? I wish mm. that found his line would say it was a setup. It was a setup. <laughs> had God be. put Jehaziel over there talking with his family members of another tribe at the right time so he could use them to speak a word. My God. Mm. So now, now people pop. Dr. Whitlow, come on, stop <laughs> doing so here's but I want before I said anything. Here's what I wanted to know: Is would this be the reason that God 
designs us to be or orchestrates that we be at certain places at certain times, even when we weren't expecting it. Like, for instance, we might be in the grocery store or we might be in Walmart or uh, some other place, and all of a sudden, you know, we come across somebody who we probably don't know or haven't seen before, and then all of a sudden God gives us something just for them at that very moment when we wasn't even thinking about it. Amen. He does that. He does that. He, does. He, he gives us a divine direction, a, a divine appointment. One day, mm-hmm. I was sitting here in the church. All of a sudden, God moved on me and told me to go over to the Marriott, which is two blocks away and around the corner. I said, Lord, I ain't got no need to go to the Marriott. But I got up and began to walk towards the Marriott. When I got to the Marriott, there was a young lady I knew getting ready to go in the Marriott. I said, what in the world are you getting ready? Where are you going? She said, well, uh, the service we were in last night, uh, the prophet told me he couldn't minister to me and tell me what God said. He told me to come by the hotel today. I said, if you don't take your behind home. Amen. I said the prophet wow. got the problems out of you at the hotel, and you ain't got sense enough to know he wants you to come here for more than a prophecy. Oh, he had a prophecy, all right. I mm. said, why he got the problems out of you at the hotel? I said, the, the devil is a liar. I took her by the That's hand. Right. I said, come on here. I'm going to walk you down to your church. You ought to be down there that Tuesday right. prayer in the house. Now, as you just asked, the Lord gave me a divine mm-hmm. appointment, a divine assignment that day, just to go and stand in front of Marriott. Who knows? I might have saved that girl life that day. You mm-hmm. sure might have. She got killed in the process. I might have kept her from a rape, a pregnancy, a murder, whatever. I don't know, but I know God sent me in front of the Marriott that day. And when I got there, about three minutes later, here she come walking up. And I was able to take her to a church and deliver her to a pastor. And I came on back down here and said, Nothing wrong with that. I want you to understand that when you really yield yourself, I ain't talking about no gift. I ain't talking about no talent. When you yourself really yield yourself to God, he can use you anywhere he desires. Mm. Amen. I'm can I add close oh. to that, uh, Chief Apostle? Just, oh, oh, let, let me finish this. I'm going to let you add. Let, let me finish this. I'm going to let you add. Because I, I'm sitting in Fuller's in North Carolina. Those of you that been down there that ate that good food, you know what I'm talking about. I'm down there in the place. These two ladies sitting at a table behind us. It was me, my mother, my sister, and my daughter, Joy. And, and sitting behind us were these two ladies. They were talking about Jesus. But I'm sitting at the table, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Lord gives me a word for both the women sitting at the table. And so when they got up to leave, I began to minister to them. It was a, it was a divine assignment because mm-hmm. we were supposed to go to the restaurant that day before, and we wound up going the next day. It was a divine assignment. I'm telling you, mm-hmm. we got to get in a place where God can use us anywhere, anytime. Come on, Richard. Well, I'm just going to simply say, and you, I think you just uh, covered what I was going to share about a divine assignment. There are times when you think you're going left and God needs you to go right. And in mm-hmm. the process, of, uh, and, and let's just be real here because this is me, the learning process for me, I went to the school of hard knocks coming up. And there were times when God needed me to go right, and I was trying to go left. And every time I went right, I ended up detouring and going left anyway. The specific purpose, one particular thing I want to talk about for the next 37 seconds or less was I went down North Carolina. I wasn't but about maybe a year or two. I was about uh, 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 my spiritual mother, uh, the late Maddie Atkinson Darden, had released me to start ministering outside of uh, Agape Christian Center during that time. And so my first uh, 
place to go preach was down in North Carolina. And that was a couple of days early because I kind of wanted to get to know the pastor. I wanted to know the people, kind of get an idea what the whole uh, scenario was about. And I didn't have to go that early, but I went that early. I didn't even get off the plane real good and get to where I was going before I ran across several people where God allowed me to just share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. A few of those people showed up for that particular revival that particular night, and I mean, it it was an experience I'll never forget because that was when I first experienced the awesomeness of God. What I'm trying to say is the Spirit of the Lord will come at a time when you least expect it, and that's a beautiful time because then you don't have time to prepare anything. It ain't about you. You can't seek a Messiah and he shall come on a Honda. You ain't got time to speak in tongues when God gives you a word to share with somebody. And one young lady in particular stands out. She's a pastor to this day. I didn't tell her that God was calling her into the ministry, but I told her God is calling her into the ministry of reconciliation. She went on to be a pastor. So had I been in the wrong place at the right time, I might have cost that young lady her anointing. I might have cost that young lady the pastor to which she enjoys to this day. And that was way back in 1987, 88. Mm. Amen. Amen. Listen at this. Listen at this. Uh, Pastor Whitlow, read that 15th verse again, because I want everybody to hear, I want everybody to hear this prophetic utterance that this young man spoke. Come on now. And he said, and he said, hearken ye all Judah, the gents of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus says wait, the wait, Lord wait, wait a minute. You. He said he said the first thing is you need to open up your ears. He said, Hearken. Mm-hmm. I want y'all to understand in this hour, we got too many people in the body of Christ that got the preacher and the and the word of God on mute. Ooh. Who I'm telling you, people of God, we got to get these people's fingers off the mute button. That's why most of them ain't no further today than they were 10 years ago. You can't keep your finger on the mute button and move further. Mm. Because the word comes mm. to mature you. How you going to get mature if your finger is on the mute button? Lord, I don't even know why I mess with that. Well, let me, since you did, Chief Apostle, I need, I need to, to take it a little deeper. I need to take it a little deeper. See, here's the reason people's finger is on the mute button. The definition of dumb in the New Testament. And so what it alludes to is the thing that we do not want to be touched. The reason people are mute in certain areas of their life is because those are areas in their life that they're sore. Those are areas in their life they don't want God to touch. Those are areas in their life they don't want God to heal. Those are the areas in their life that they want to keep a demon operating. That's why it is mute there. That's why they call it a dumb. That's why it's called a dumb spirit. So that's why they can't hear because they've turned deaf in that particular area. So that's why they stay in their mess. That's why they keep on doing wrong. That's why they keep on messing up because why? They want to stay mute in that area that they need to hear so that they can respond appropriately because that's what hearken and hear mean to receive, to hear, to respond appropriately and so people want to keep having an excuse as to why they can keep playing guilty or a reason that they can keep having a pity party or that they can get some attention it's a form of manipulation that's why okay i'm yeah. leaving that alone right there okay no, uh, uh, okay go ahead go ahead <laughs> and, and, and let me let me throw another piece of wood on that fire i want you to understand that if you can hear the word you can't speak the word neither. Mm. That's the truth. Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing the by the word of God, and yeah. then we speak in faith by the word to obtain what we need. So if you can't mm. hear it, you can't speak it. And that's the okay. trick of the enemy. Keep you from hearing. Keep you from receiving, and then he'll keep your mouth from saying that that God said, because he knows 
it will come to pass. All Amen. Right, the rest of that. So it says again, and he said, hearken ye, all Judah, and all ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, and thou king Jehoshaphat. Thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. Now watch this. Why are we so afraid when we think things have mounted up on us? Why are we so afraid? We, we get frantic. All the bills are mounted up. All sickness is all over the house. And this, that, and the other. Let me tell you something on this line tonight. Amen. If things are mounting up, Lord, I might be running ahead of my thing anyhow. If things are mounting up, amen, what you need to do is get your phone, amen, put it on praise break, and get you a good one in. Uh huh. Oh, somebody said he done lost his mind. I need yeah. money to pay the bills. I, I I need God to come in and bring peace in my home. I need God to do this. And do well. I'm giving you the secret right now. Put the praise on and let yourself go and dance and jump and run and scream until God sends the breakthrough. My God. Mm-hmm. I'm telling you what I know. I was in my house, amen, thinking about some things one day, what I needed God to help me to do and bring it to completion. I got up to go in the kitchen, and while I was walking from the chair into the kitchen, the Lord told me, he said, go ahead, get it, get it. Go ahead, get it, get it. Put your praise in it. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Mm. And I started I started dancing in between the living room and the kitchen, and I'm telling you, before that day was over, I got phone calls that turned the situation around. My God. Come on, Rich. I know you're burning up to say something. Well, I'm sort of kind of sitting back and listening and enjoying. I was looking at the 15th verse that uh, Vice Apostle Whitler was reading, and I like how he broke this. All who live in Judah got to me. I kept looking at that. All who live in, I know right here he's talking to the, the inhabitants of the land, spiritually speaking, all of you who live in praise, listen up. God has a word for you. I like this, this, this prophet. And even in this day and time, you know, if we learn how to live in Judah, if we had li- learn how to live in praise mode, I like the testimony you shared, Chief Apostle, because like you, I've seen days like that. There were days when I would just start dancing and just start praising God, and I don't have a clue what I'm praising God about. I just want to. Mm. I don't know. I'm, hey, this is mine. I just had a, a case of the I just want to. And in the process of the case of I just want to, the need that I might have had was supplied. The desire that I might have had might even have been supplied. But more importantly, it gave me that opportunity to just put on display that my God is an awesome God. That's what I'm going to say for the moment. I'm just looking at this. Listen, King Jehoshaphat and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem, all who live in praise and all who are in the house of the Lord. Jerusalem, we know, after Jesus rose and was resurrected, became the home or the birthplace for the church. We recognize that. So when I throw uh, Judah, praise, and Jerusalem, God's house together, oh, my God, come on, it's time. It's party time, brother. It is party time. Watch this. Watch this. That's, that's really messed up by somebody's thinking. Hey, but as you kept messing with that, Judah praise and Jerusalem or Jerusalem, amen, amen. Come on. It means the place of peace. Oh, God. That's what it means. So it says all of you are praise and all of you are peace. Come on, let's get this thing done. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Let's see, I, I want you to understand, and I'm glad that my I heard my big sister is on the Facebook tonight. 
I pray she didn't go off because she know like I know, talking about Bishop Willow Moody, she know like I know praise has brought us to where we are right now. Amen. Mm-hmm. Oh, you talking about a dance party? Amen. If you didn't have a pair of good shoes, if you hadn't been, if you hadn't been to the nail shop to get your pedicure, there was no need of getting on the floor with Moody Smith. Amen. A whole bunch of us, cause we were gonna dance until days got better. Lord have mercy. Don't stir me up tonight. Amen. I'm gonna have to no reason. Because I'm, I'm about to get stirred up here, and then I'll be gone, and eight men, I'll be to run out of time, and all that kind of good stuff. Come on, read, man of God. It says again, let me read that again. And he said, hearken ye all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem, thou king Jehoshaphat, thus saith the Lord unto you, be not afraid nor dismayed. By reason uh, of be not what? what? To, be not dismayed. what? Uh, I'm or dismayed. Mm-hmm. Well, 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 here's the thing. First thing is his first thing he says is don't be afraid, don't be fearful, don't be frightened. But then when he says uh, be not dismayed, what he's saying is don't find yourself in a place like you're you're in despair, as if you're in a helpless situation. Sometimes the situation is so bad that we feel helpless. We feel hopeless. We feel that nothing is going to make it any better. And God got news for us. It is not as bad as it seems. It is not as bad as it looks. Matter of fact, I believe with my whole heart that what it looks like is not really what it is. And what it is is not really what it's going to be. Not when God gets through because he says here, for the battle is not yours, but God. Sometimes we get worked up and stressed out and frustrated and irritated and agitated over what we're looking at. And that is only the, the amplification of what the enemy wants us to see instead of the magnification of what God is going to do. Oh, my God. Did you, did you get that? That is the amplification. The enemy will amplify things so that we won't magnify God. But if we magnify God, God will minimize what the enemy seeks to show us. Amen. Okay. So, 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 <laughs> so are you saying, are you saying that sometimes things look bigger than they are? Absolutely. Absolutely. Because I'm going to take you somewhere with that. Come Here on. we are. Everybody, all the warriors of Israel were scared of Goliath. But the thing that they were scared of, it was big, but it was not as big as they thought. Y'all got to remember He was nine feet tall when he put his helmet on. He was about 11 and a half feet, but he was standing on a mountain. He looked much bigger than what. Y'all ain't going to help me tonight. Amen. All you preachers online, go ahead and preach it. Just in the time. Amen. He, he He looked bigger than he really was. Because the whole time he was arguing and intimidating Israel for 40 days, he's standing up there on a mountain looking bigger than what he really was. But when oh, David man. came out there with his little self, David was the only one that brought him off the mountain. David said, I got you now. Uh-huh. He said, I didn't think you was as big as you thought you was. He said, I got you now. I got you coming down to the valley. Come on down here, you nut. He said, you <laughs> come with sword and spear. He said, but I come in the name of the Lord. He said, I got you now. Uh, oh, my God. I feel on. like running, but I can't see where I'm going. Hey, but I believe I just danced here in the chair. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uh, so the battle is not yours, but God. This is the part I like. It says, tomorrow, go ye down against them. Behold, they come up by the cliff of Ziz, and ye shall find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Juriel. I, mm. I like the fact that he says this. Like what, he, what he says is, I want you to go down and I want you to meet them. Sometimes God will tell you, I want you to go meet your enemy. 
You'd be like, but wait a minute, God, wait. But not only will it tell you go meet your enemy, he'll tell you where your enemy at, too. That's what I love about God. Exactly. He says, I tell you exactly where they at. All you got to do is trust me on that note, that I know where I'm taking you and I know what I'm about to do. See, if we would learn to trust what God is saying, the prop, the biggest issue is we have a hard time taking God at his word because we think that God don't know what we're dealing with. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on, Rick. Right. I know you're ready. No, I'm, I'm again. I'm looking, and I'm I'm back up just a little bit. Be not afraid or discouraged. How many times have you read that in scripture? How many times has God told us to not to be afraid, to be of a good courage, to be strong in Him and the power of His might? How many times has God had to reassure each and every one of us to go forth and do the test? See, the problem here is, and here's where I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay in, 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 in context with what we're talking about here. Here's where we could find out who's of faith and who's actually of fear or who's putting on a show. Let me say it that way. I mean, we can go back to another time, a young man by the name of Gideon who had to lead an army to go against his enemy. And he had 30,000 men. They just volunteered because they didn't want to look like punks in front of everybody else. So God gave him a couple of tests. He said, look, take them down to the brook, and whoever is just drinking because they thirsty and ain't paying no attention, send them on home. They're scared anyway. But anybody that cups their hand and starts drinking, you want to take them. My man just ends up with 300 men. It just goes to show you they that are with us are far more than they that are against us. And Jehoshaphat from Jehaziel, Jehaziel's mouth is hearing these very words. Look, I got this ain't your battle anyway. I be, I wanted to do this way when Belshazzar was supposed to have gotten rid of these guys, but they kept the Ammonites just to, because the Ammonites took Judah down for a split second. Uh-uh, I got this. Uh, can I say it in a way? I want to be as polite as I know how. Uh, in my Medea voice, God didn't say it like this, but I could kind of sense it. Look, y'all back to H up. I got this. <laughs> Uh, oh, well, <laughs> mm, mm. oh, Lord have mercy. Lord Jesus. Yes. Look like I'm going to have to have Try an early call. altar call tonight. <laughs> listen, an listen, altar call. Listen at, this, listen at this text note. It says, Stand ye still mm-hmm. for the battle. Is not your. He says, stop being so busy. Stop worrying. Stop freaking out. Stop crying. Stop throwing pillows. Stop being angry with everybody and talking like, hey, man, you know, talking so rough to everybody. He said, just be still. Relax. God said, I got this. He said, I got this. And I want you to know I got it. Come on. How how many times when you got bigger sisters or bigger brothers, you tell them what's going on, and they tell you, don't worry about it. That's my life work. I'll take care of it for you. Mm-hmm. That's what big that's what big brother was saying to your house of fact. He said, mm-hmm. Don't you worry about nothing. I got you. Amen. He said the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Yeah. I want you yeah. to understand tonight. I want you to understand tonight, amen, people of God, that God is never going to leave you out there by yourself. No, he mm-hmm. is not. He's not going to speak and give you direction. And then walk away and said, okay, find it on your own. Mm-hmm. That ain't going to happen. Got GPS. I hope you got GPS. <laughs> God said, I'm going to stay right there and hang in there with you until the end. Not the bitter end, until the victorious end. Uh-oh. Hey. Mm-hmm. He said, I'm going to stay right there. He said, and I'm, he said, I'm going to stay right there with you and help you open up a can of hallelujah 
And all they had to know, mm-hmm, he watch. didn't say don't believe it, just watch. He said believe it and watch is what God said to him. And in a situation like that, we have to recognize that there is nothing we're going through that's so difficult. So if there's nothing too difficult for God. There's nothing we're going through that we cannot overcome. Our problem here is we have that kind of faith, and it's not even faith. It's just presumption. I don't really know what to call it. Somebody will come up with the right word where we say, I'll believe it when I see it, when all the time God's been telling us, believe it, therefore you shall see See it. When we learn to step into the realm of faith and stop letting our situations and our circumstances cause us to look like grasshoppers in their sight, that's when we get to overtake the land. When we come to the point where that 11 foot giant is cut down to maybe a foot and a half, and you learn to take the sword of the spirit and just lop his big head off and put it on a platter and let the king see that God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask us, that's when we're where God wants us to be. Y'all are going through what you're going through. They're dealing with COVID-19 and everybody's freaking out. Men's hearts are failing them because of fear. My brother, my sister, whoever you are, whether it's iHeartRadio, Spotify Radio, whether you're on the Google app, whether you're watching by YouTube, by the TuneIn app, no matter where you're listening, God is in control. End of story. Mm. Well, amen. Amen. See, is mm-hmm. Pastor Carl is still with us? Uh, Pastor Carl, yes, she's still with us. Uh, there are several people here. She quiet on us tonight. Be able to hear you. She used to be right there. She quiet on us tonight. She must be relaxing tonight. She she letting us crack this. She didn't want to throw out too uh, much information for us. Chief Apostle, mm-hmm. Mr. Tawan yes. is going off the deep end tonight. All right. She backs up. Uh, Who? She said, yes, Farrell, sorry, uh, Sister Tawanda Boatner, the one from Louisiana. Uh-huh. She said, uh, 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 from her, her comment, when God shows up, he shows out. And then she said, Lord said, yes, Farrell, sorry, is bigger than God. Then she turned around and said, old folk used to say, if you don't believe it, just live. Yes, he is God, uh, the one and the only. Yes, yeah. sir. All right. Yes, sir. What, what, oh, she's going to want to deep in here. I, I wish you could see this, Apostle. Uh, Sister Tawanda, you sound like you got some fire in you. We got a few minutes, sis. If you want to come on and say something, you got a few minutes. 646-564-9842. Love her writing, though. Uh, <laughs> amen. Let, uh, let, let, me, let, me say, let me say this to you tonight. Amen. It, it, in, that, in that verse, it says to us that when we praise, I, I was listening at this thing. It says that when we praise and praise right, it will even bury our flesh from being in the way. Amen. Praise will take, actually what I'm saying is, praise will take you out of yourself. And right. give you a sense of power that will make you ready to stand up against the enemy. Mm. But then God comes in and says, all right, I know you're ready, but not this time. I got this. You, you stay ready, but I got this. I, I'm going to deal with this for you on this time. Now, I want you to understand Ain't no need of getting excited. Every battle you go through, God is not coming to fight. Some things you got to deal with yourself. Uh oh. Oh, I heard a noise, man. I didn't hear no amen. I didn't hear no clap. No nothing. Everybody went south on me. Lord have mercy. You need to know tonight. That there are times that you will have to roll them fleets up and get in the ring. They're gonna mm. come. There are some times in your walk with God that you're gonna have to float like a butterfly and sing like a bee. You got that right. But then there are times like we're reading about tonight where God is gonna say, Back up. This one That's is right. mine. Oh. And I want you to understand, if God has gotten in the fight, 
there's something greater get ready to happen than what you think. Lord, come on, you got that right. He does, he does not get in the fight just for a fight. He's working on a greater ending than what you could even think. Come on, let's read. Yeah. How much time we All got right. here? We got about five minutes. Oh Lord. Oh Lord. Yes, what it, I can't can we do it in five, Lord? Come on. We're yeah. gonna go we go we're gonna go right through. And Jehoshaphat bowed his head with his face to the ground, and all Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem fell before the Lord, worshiping the Lord. Nineteen says, and the Levites of the children of the Korthites and of the children of Korites stood up to praise the Lord God of Israel with a loud voice. Twenty is said, and they rose early in the morning, went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat and said, Hear me, O Judah, ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. Believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe in his prophets, so shall you prosper. Now, two things I want to say. One, Jehoshaphat did something by example. First, he bowed his head and he worshiped and they followed him as a leader. Then, when it was time to give God praise, they stood up and they lifted up their voice. Then when they got to where they were going, Jehoshaphat said, this is what I want y'all to do. Believe the Lord, believe in, watch this, watch the words, believe in the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Then he says, believe his prophets. They didn't believe in his prophets. Believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. I'm done talking, man of God. It's all on you and the overseer. Amen. Go ahead, go ahead, Rich. Well, I'm not going to put too much more to it. I'm just saying, I'm actually, if you don't mind, uh, Chief Apostle, with your permission, I'm going to go ahead and give my closing statement because we're down to the last three minutes. And I know it's, a, it's it, let me just simply say this. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're into, whatever it is that you're dealing with, whatever persecution, trials, trouble, don't panic. A number one, it's just a test. God wants to see where are you. Do you trust him? Do you have enough confidence to know that he's going to bring you out? You might be tried in the fire. The only way you're going to come out of pure gold is if you step out on faith. Let me say it like this. Get out of the boat. God's waiting to help you walk on the water. I'm going to stop right there and turn it into your hands, sir. All right. Watch this. According to the scripture tonight, amen. Notice Judah started this thing off. But when it got time, amen, to go higher, the musicians and the singers took over. It said the mm. Levites stood up. Oh, God. Judah stood up in the beginning. Now the Levites stood up. I'm telling you, in battle, in the move of God, in the flow of God, you got to know your place. You got to mm. know when to move, how to move, and when to get out the way. Come on. And then the Bible says, believe in the Lord your God. You're going to be established. God said, I'm getting ready to start something. I'm getting ready to open something up. I'm getting ready to do a new thing. He said, I'm going to establish you. But he said, believe in his prophets. Oh, little young Jehaziel. He said, believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. Let me close this real quick. I need you to understand, parody in itself is not just money. It's not just houses and cars. It's not just fine clothes. But I need you to understand prosperity is victory. Uh Mm -hmm. I wish I had time to mess with it, but I'm going to have to treat you like Alfred Hitchcock. Amen. You have not. Amen. Been good tonight. You've been real naughty. Amen. So I will not be able to give you the end. I'm going to have to go now in Jesus' name. I want Mm. us to continue to pray for those who are suffering 
Amen. With the coronavirus, COVID-19. Amen. I want us to continue to pray for hurting families all across the world who have lost many loved ones to this amen virus. Amen. I want you to pray for the churches who have lost their leaders due to COVID-19. Amen. I want us to pray tonight. Amen. For many situations that have happened because of this virus that is in the land. I still Mm. believe the word of God, amen, in another part of this second chronicle said in 7 and 14, if my people who call by my name Mm -hmm. would humble themselves and Mm -hmm. pray and seek my faith and turn from their wicked ways, he said, this mm-hmm. what I hear from heaven. Let me say it like this tonight. Then I'll lift coronavirus mm-hmm. and forgive your sins mm-hmm. and heal their land. Yes. Tonight, amen, I'm going to pray. Amen, and we're getting ready to close this session out. But I thank God for all of you that tuned in tonight by way of Facebook and all the other amen uh, means of technology that the Lord has blessed us with tonight that you may call in, tune in, amen, to this podcast, to this great, great amen discussion tonight. I love you all, and we thank you. Amen for your participation. Amen. We bless God tonight. Let us pray, Dr. Kim. You're special to us. We thank you. That's my producer. We thank you. Amen. And we love you in Jesus' name. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, we praise you. We honor you and thank you tonight for every word spoken because your word is real. Your word is alive. Your word brings life. Your word has great revelation. And we thank you for rhema is your word. And we pray tonight that this word is rhema in our spirit, man, that it may live, breathe, walk with us, talk with us in the name of Jesus. Lord God, tonight we pray for every situation that is connected to the coronavirus, whether it be bereavement, whether it be the sick person in the hospital or in the convalescent or in the rehab. But, God, we pray tonight for your healing virtue. We pray tonight, God, that those, God, that look like they're on the way out, work a miracle and bring them back in the name of Jesus. We pray for churches who have already lost their leaders. Well, not lost, but God, their leaders have gone on from this earth. Help them to make the right decisions. Help them not Mm -hmm. just to pick somebody, but let them go in prayer and say, God, my choose who you choose in the name of the Lord Jesus. And then we pray not only for the suffering in that way, We pray for every church, every pastor, every home, every person, Lord God, that will allow you to touch their lives. We pray for them tonight. And, Father, we thank you and we praise you in the name of the Lord Jesus. We pray. Amen and amen. As I say every week, if you're catching hell, don't hold it. If you're going through hell, don't stop. Just go ahead. Go ahead. God has greater things in store for you. The Lord bless you and keep you is my prayer. We say shalom, shalom. Amen. Shalom. Shalom. Dr. Kim. Of 
the Lord. I got to be, need to be in the presence of the Lord. There is joy in His presence. There are pleasures evermore. There is no condemnation in the presence of the Lord. I've got to be, need to be in the presence of the Lord. I've got to be, need to be in the presence of the Lord. There is joy in His presence. There are pleasures evermore. There is no condemnation in the presence of the Lord. There is joy in His presence. There are pleasures evermore. There is no condemnation in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 